Hello, hello. As promised, this is part two of the NAC online database tour. I have, as I stated in part one, gone ahead and filled out some of this app that I'm using as a demo to show you. The first thing is I have gone into my Automation Amy um, live app design and gone in and put in the custom colors that I want. I've gone in and updated my custom logo. So now on the front end, you can see here, this is how we're looking now, it looks much better. The next thing uh, you could see here is I changed the text just to be a little more user friendly. Uh, I think it just said login, enter your email address and password to log in. And I just updated it to welcome. This is kind of the header title you can change and you can put in whatever paragraph text you want here. And to do that, um, that is a page. It's my dashboard login. And then you would come in here to this and specifically um, make some settings right here and right here. Uh, I don't know if I showed this. I don't think I did in the last video, but you can enable an option to do single sign-on for your users, but I am not going to do that. I want them to have to have a client account created internally by admin. The next thing I want to show you is under our user roles here, I've gone in and um, we've got an admin, which would be uh, how I'm using this for just, you know, general internal staff, people on my automation Amy team. And then we're going to use client access to give our client contacts access, access to this uh, dashboard if we put it in place as a live uh, feature through my website. So the first thing we have here is I've gone in and um, added in an access type. I don't know, maybe further down in my demo, I'll show how you can use the different types. But I just kind of gone in and put in some fields that I'm thinking I might want to use later. Also in our client access, you have uh, approval templates and you have uh, an account info template. So what I did is I added in myself in part one and then I also added in myself again under a different name and a different email so I can show you the difference between what an admin user level role sees in this um, app and what a person with only client access role sees. So when I added my account, I set it up so that a user added under client access would automatically get this email. And again, this can all be customized. So, um, you know, you can, it automatically puts in their first name uh, to log into your account. Please click on the following link. Now, usually what I do is I update this link. So um, right now we don't have this embedded on my website to show. You could just put, you know, click on the following link and you can, you know, hyperlink this here instead of showing this full link. But later on, when we actually embed this app, what you would make want to make sure that you do is come in here and put in, you know, what the real link's going to be. So say it's not going to be this NAC login, it's going to be something like, um, you know, automation amy.com slash uh, dashboard, whatever it is. So you just want to remember um, that when this comes across and when you're when you're ready to actually send these out that you update this in here. Over here, this is what the email looks like coming in. So you could see it says, you know, the name of the app and then your account info. And here's the text. The next thing I did is I added some data under clients. So clients is going to be, you know, the actual company name. So I added some records in here. These are not clients of mine. They're just local places that um, are, you know, native to Tallahassee, Florida, where I live, just using them as demo clients. And then I also came in here and since I'm going to use this uh, as a website uh, care plan demonstration of how you can set up a portal with NAC. I've gone in and added some fields to keep track of the website care plans that we're offering. So what I want to show you here is how you can set up conditional um, rules on your fields. So we are going to have a company, the name of the plan, the care plan that they're, they've signed up for, 
um, I call this tickets and I know you can either go with, you know, for this plan, you get, you know, two tickets a month or four tickets support to support tickets submitted per month or other people do it where you get a certain number of hours per month. So just for this example, I went with tickets, how many support tickets the client on the particular plan that they signed up for gets per month. Uh, the billing cycle, you know, whether it's a monthly or annual billing, and then how much the um, per billing cycle they're built. I want the tickets field to populate automatically based on whatever plan name is selected. In order to do that, we want to use conditional rules. So what I've done is come in here and just as examples, I've said, okay, yes, I want a conditional rule. And when someone completes this form, I want it to automatically fill in the number of tickets based on the plan name. So when the plan name, you could see you have the option of picking any of the fields under here. When the plan name is the starting tier, the number of tickets should automatically be filled in as two. When the plan name is the best value tier, it should be filled in automatically as four. And when the plan name is the e-commerce tier, they automatically get filled in with six tickets. So again, this is just examples, but that's how you can make it so that when a user is uh, submitting a form, you're taking the thought process out of it for them. They don't have to reference another site, another document to say, oh, you know, this is a new client I'm entering. I don't remember how many tickets they get under the best value tier. You don't wanna leave that up for error. Just go ahead and automatically fill in the number for them by setting these conditional rules. All right, so we have another one here. I don't know if I finished this one. Yes, I did. Well, I put one uh, conditional rule in here for you to see. So same thing. When the plan name is the starting tier and the billing cycle is monthly, the value should be set to $99. Let's add one here. Uh, we don't want every record. We just want when the plan name is the starting tier, but whoops, uh, and the billing cycle is annually. Uh, we want this to be, let's say, uh, 100 times 12, 1200. Let's give them, you know, let's make it a thousand since they bought it annually. We'll give them two months. You can see here the fields where you've set a conditional rule have this little symbol here that tells you that there's conditional um, fields set here. Now moving on into, that's on the data side. So now again, NAC has kind of data and pages because it separates the two um, into what, what is the data you want to collect and how do you want to collect it? And then the pages are, how do you want to display this? So what I did is we're using a dashboard that's going to be the same for everybody, but we're going to limit what people can access to by their user roles. On the home page, um, we're going to use this later. I think I'm going to end up having a, maybe uh, for sure a part three and probably a part four too, but I'm going to fill this in later to be what the clients would see when they log in. But for now, I've moved on to uh, the admin login area and what only people with an admin access are going to have access to. On the front end, it looks the same and we're going to sign in and you'll see what I mean. So at the moment, everybody has access and I renamed this dashboard page to home. Um, since we're going to be using this in, in relation to websites and website care plans as, as this example, it makes sense to say to the client, you know, when you log in on your home page, you'll see X. So I just put in some placeholder text and I'll do this in, a sec in, a, in another video to show you how you can build this out. The part that we're working on now is this client roster button. So we're gonna assume right now I'm logged in with an admin level account. So I have access to this dashboard, I have access to see this homepage, and I have access to the client roster. Obviously we don't want all our clients who have client access level to log in and see the client roster. I've built this out, I've made it so when you click on the client roster, you would see a list of all of the client names. I've left in the search by keyword, obviously with just three clients as examples, there's not much to search for, but you know, if you're up in 60, 100 and 200 clients, it makes it a lot easier just to be able to put in, you know, Florida and hit the search button and narrow it down from there. There we go. Let's do the add new client. Here, if we click this button, 
uh, what I've done is made it so the first three fields, since they're my required fields, and you set that on the data end in the fields itself, you say required or not required, I'm just going to go ahead and put in here a new client. So I'm going to add client. One thing you can control in NAC is what happens when a person submits a form. As you can see here, I have it to automatically reload the form and display a message here. What we can do is have the form revert you back to the original page. Let's switch over back to our builder and I'll show you how you can change that. All right, so pages, client roster, add client. All right, so this is our form that we just used on the front end. So if we want to change what happens after the form is submitted, we're going to go here into the form rules. So we can show confirmation message and you can type and make this whatever you want it to. You can even embed an image, you know, dress this out how you want. You have the option to have a link that someone has to click to reload the form or you can just have it automatically reload the form like I had it. If you want it to redirect somebody instead of uh, reloading the form, you can. And what you would do here is just change it to redirect to the parent page. All right, and then we wanna make sure that we hit save changes. And then we're gonna come back over here. We're going to refresh the page. Now let's put in, let's put college town. We're gonna add this client. And now see the difference. We came back to our main page. The, the chances are that you're not going to enter, you know, several clients at one time. So uh, depending on the workflow, you know, maybe you do have a bunch of clients you do in a batch and you want to just stay on the page and let it reload the form. And it would be annoying to have to keep jumping back here and clicking the new client. But just know that you have the option in NAC. That's, you know, one of the differences with uh, NAC and Airtable is you don't have that kind of control um, in to the system. So you can see here, Cool Beans and College Town have been added just as I did with the form. Let's say that you want to, you've got this client roster page, but you want to be able to uh, make a quick uh, click next to the row of the client you want to see more details about. How would you do that? We're going to come back over here and we're going to edit this table. Over here on the left, you can see uh, you have the option of putting whatever fields in this table that you want to see all the time. So you could see that there's an ID field that we didn't include in the table. And let's say that we don't even you know, care about seeing the address. You can just delete that. It doesn't delete the data. It just deletes the field from the column. And if you hit save changes, we're gonna come over here and refresh again. And you'll be able to see, look, now we just got the three columns. We don't care about seeing their address all the time. We just want their phone number, boom, to the website, and then the client name. You know there's more details and you just want that nice um, clean view in the table, you still have the ability to link to see more. So here is how you do that. You can add a link to just delete a record entirely. You can uh, do a link to edit the record. What we're gonna do is add a link to view more details. So the minute you do that, it automatically adds this in. It ties in to know that when you click view on this row, it's gonna view Florida State uh, information only, not everybody. So what I'd like to do here is you can edit this to shorten this more details. Uh, view more and you can even add in an icon. I like to use this little eye icon. I think it makes it obvious to view further information. So we're going to save changes and what happens is NAC automatically knows that you need a page to see the details. So if you look over here we had add client um, our client roster, which is this table. And now since we added the view more, we've got a new view client details, which is where you go when you click the view more right there. Now we have to um, kind of build this page out. See how the all of the fields were put in automatically. Over here, you can change um, to show all the fields or just to hide the field if you don't want um, to see it when there's nothing in it. So we've added our view more button here which jumps over to view client details. Since there's just one, uh, let's switch it to FSU because I know that there's more details in there. 
All right, so we've got an address now that we can see, but let's say that we want to, when we click view more on a client, we also want to see who has access under this uh, particular client. So we're going to go ahead and add in some uh, a separate details category. This is details on the client and we want to add in new details on who has client access. So we're going to click this and now uh, this is a little bit more of the back end of how NAC looks and this has to do with the relational databases set up. So we don't want to see more details of the client record. We actually want to see records that are connected to this page's client and what we want to see is who is in the client access uh, data object and they must be related to this page's client. So we're going to add that. If you click this now, what you're going to see is, again, you have the ability to change the layout. All right, so there I am. I added myself in with my uh, one of my other email addresses because later on I'll show you the difference when I log in with this uh, user account versus the one I'm logged in with now. I'm going to refresh this page. And now here uh, you see client access and uh, all the client details. Let's say we want to make a two column row and we want everything left aligned. If you want these to be top above, you can do it that way. So let's refresh this again and you can see the difference in the layout now. So here we've got this two column and the second uh, grouping of fields is just a single column. And then under here, client access, Amy Keys has an admin account already. This is the level of access that she has. You could see that the, the difference between NAC and Airtable is quite a, quite a bit with this. You're basically building out kind of a, a web page, so to speak. This is, a, this is a portal, but you're, you know, tweaking and enhancing the page to be laid out how you want it. I think I'm going to stop here. I want to um, show you how the tables are related so that it knows uh, to connect client access uh, people with their client names and I'm going to go ahead and build out some more in the system. So in part three we're going to go through it some more and you can continue to see how I'm building this website client um, care plan portal out using the next system.